Welcome to PALS. It's from Science Anatomy Lecture Series. In this place, our goal is to make anatomy simple. If you're just joining us or you have not subscribed, we would like you to subscribe now and be part of this amazing anatomy family. In today's lecture, we'll be discussing the anatomy of the brachial plexus. This is the second part of our lecture on the brachial plexus. This lecture is divided into three parts. This part is on the distribution of the infraclavicular branches of the brachial plexus. The part three of this lecture will be on brachial plexus injuries and their clinical presentations. So make sure you don't miss any of these parts. So let's go to class. So we are going to start with a summary of all the branches from the three cords. In the lateral cord, we have three branches. We have the lateral pectoral nerve, lateral root of median nerve, and musculocutaneous nerve. For medial cord, we have five, medial pectoral nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, medial root of median nerve, and ulnar nerve. Now for posterior cord, we have five, two, and we have radial nerve, axillary nerve, thoracodosal nerve, also called nerve to latissimus dorsi, and we have upper subscapular nerve and lower subscapular nerve. If you're a fan of mnemonics, we can use for the lateral cord, we have two ladies married a man. Those are the two L's and then the one M in the beginning of each of the branches. For the medial cord, we have four men could not understand and we are seeing the four m's and the u finally for the posterior cord we have ulna heart to explain and in that word ulna we have the five branches from the posterior cord so our mnemonic is two ladies married a man four men could not understand and ulna heart to explain in the lateral cord, we are already acquainted with branches and we are going to start with the lateral pectoral nerve. The lateral pectoral nerve pierces the clavipectoral fascia to supply pectoralis major only. Let's look at our first illustration. In this illustration, this is the cut edge of pectoralis major, and in here we're having pectoralis minor. This is the clav clavicle, here is the clavicle, and the fascia here is the clavipectoral fascia that wraps around the P minor and connects to the clavicle. So we're seeing the lateral pectoral nerve here piercing only the clavipectoral fascia and already it's already above the P minor and it will run to pierce the P major. This nerve supplies pectoralis minor through its branch of communication with media pectoral nerve and goes straight ahead to supply the pectoralis major here. Let us also look at another illustration. In this illustration, here is the lateral pectoral nerve and we can see it piercing the clavipectoral pectoral fascia here, although not shown in this illustration, and going straight on to supply the pectoralis major. We can see the P minor here that actually it did not pierce the P minor. Now what we see piercing the P minor here is the medial pectoral nerve as we can see here. Now another thing to note about this lateral pectoral nerve is actually it lies medial to medial pectoral nerve despite its name. I will explain that when I will take medial pectoral nerve. So if we also look at this illustration, this is a sagittal section and in this sagittal section we can see the P major here. That's a section of the P minor and this is the clavipectoral fascia. The lateral pectoral nerve will be piercing the clavipectoral fascia alongside the thoracoacromial artery and will 
give a branch to the p minor here which will get to p minor through its communication with the medial pectoral nerve and then go right on to supply the pectoralis major so the nerve supplies both pectoralis major and pectoralis minor for muscular cutaneous nerve this is a nerve of the flexor compartment of the arm now one unique thing about this nerve is its early takeoff from the lateral cord let's look at our illustrations let's start with the one here in this space we can see the musculocutaneous nerve having an early takeoff here and in this our next illustration we can also see the here is the lateral cord and here is the musculocutaneous nerve having an early takeoff from the lateral cord so how does it run it will first of all give a little branch to this muscle gracobrichalis here after giving a little branch innervating it it will now pierce it and run through it to supply the rest of the muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm and what are those muscles we have the biceps brachii and also brachialis this musculocutaneous nerve will also continue distally to the forearm at that point it will run cutaneous and will run as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm so at the arm it is a motor nerve supplying the flexor compartment of the arm and then in the forearm it will run as a cutaneous nerve now it's it's important to note that as a result of its early takeoff from the lateral cord if there is an injection of anesthetic solution in the floor of the axilla in order to effect brachial plexus nerve block most times the musculocutaneous nerve is not blocked owing to its high takeoff from the lateral cord the last branch from lateral cord we'll look at is the lateral root of the median nerve median nerve is formed by contributions from roots from lateral cord and medial cord let's look at our illustration here is actually the median nerve and here is the lateral cord and here is the medial cord so we're seeing the lateral root of median nerve here that's the contribution here which runs that's the contribution here which runs as the continuation of the lateral cord it will combine with the root from the median nerve that's the root from median nerve and both will form the median nerve we now go to the medial cord and as we've already noted we have five branches that are listed we'll start with medial pectoral nerve this has root value c8 to t1 in this illustration so what it does here is to run from the under surface of the p minor it will pierce it and supply it and also run to the under surface of the p major and also supply it so here is p minor here is p major and then here is the medial pectoral nerve running through it and then also getting uh, running also to the p major the medial pectoral nerve lies lateral to the lateral pectoral nerve so why is it called medial then it is because both nerves that is medial and lateral pectoral nerves are named based on the cut they are coming from not on their relationship to each other it's good you know to that now look at medial cutaneous nerve of the arm this is actually the smallest and the most medial branch of the brachial plexus the root values are c8 and t1 let's look at our illustration here we can locate the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm that's the nerve we have here this nerve runs on the medial side of the axillary vein and here is the axillary vein 
and here is the nerve running medial to it and it supplies the skin over the front and medial side of the arm. So we sometimes see a contribution of one special nerve called the intercostobrachial nerve to this. This intercostobrachial nerve communicates with this medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. What is this nerve called intercostobrachial nerve? It is the lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve that will emerge from the second intercostal space. We'll look at the next nerve in this cord, which is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. The root value also is C8 and T1. This nerve is larger than the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm. And then we we'll see this nerve in between the axillary artery here. Here is the axillary artery and here is the axillary vein. And then in between them, anteriorly, we find the this is the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm lying between these two vessels. Now, deep to them is the ulnar nerve. So, we have the ulnar nerve lying deep to the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, and then we have the axillary artery lying lateral to them and axillary vein lying medial to them, while we have medial cutaneous nerve of the arm lying most medial. This nerve supplies the skin over the lower part of the arm and also the medial side of the forearm. We'll look at medial root of the medial nerve. As we noted earlier, this is the branch here coming from the medial cord. Now, this nerve will cross the axillary artery. Here is the axillary artery and then this is the medial root crossing, crossing it to be able to fuse with the lateral root so that they can form the median nerve. Ulnar nerve is the largest branch of the medial cord and it will run down between the axillary artery and the vein as we noted earlier. At the upper part we see the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and then deep to it we see the ulnar nerve. On each side we see the vessels, laterally the axillary artery and medially the axillary vein. It is also the most posterior structure which runs down the medial side of the flexor compartment of the arm. We will next consider the posterior cord. The posterior cord has five branches as listed on the slide we are viewing. We are going to use this as our illustration to try to locate them. Here in this illustration we are seeing the first branch, which is the upper subscapular nerve. This is the upper subscapular nerve. And here is the next nerve, which is the thoracodosal nerve or middle subscapular nerve or nerve to latissimus tosi. And then here is the lower subscapular nerve. And then at this point, we have the axillary nerve. And then here we have the radial nerve. First the upper subscapular nerve. Here again is the upper subscapular nerve. It's actually a very small nerve and it enters the upper part of the subscapularis. Here is the subscapularis muscle. Here is the subscapularis muscle and then this is the tiny branch called the upper subscapular nerve entering the upper part of this muscle. Next, we will look at the thoracodosal nerve. This is the thoracodosal nerve, again, running a long distance. Now, this nerve will run on the posterior axillary wall, and then this is the posterior axillary wall. It will go beyond the lower part of teres major. Here is subscapularis. Now, this is teres major. Now, we see the thoracodosal nerve, which we already told you is also called the middle subscapular nerve, also called the nerve to latissimus dorsi. So it will run beyond the subscapula and then will run on the teres major and run beyond the teres major to the muscle of supply, which is on the deep surface of latissimus dorsi, which it also supplies.
Last on this slide, we'll look at the lower subscapular nerve. This is the lower subscapular nerve. Now, this nerve is larger than the upper subscapular nerve and will run on the subscapularis, which it supplies its lower part and will not end there, it will go beyond the subscapularis to the next muscle on this plane, which is the teres major, which it also supplies. We will next consider the axillary nerve. This nerve is also called the circumflex nerve. Why? Because we see it circling around the humerus. Now, it is one of the two terminal branches of the posterior cord. The other terminal branch is the radial nerve. This nerve, despite its name, axillary nerve, has nothing it is supplying in the axilla. It exits from the axilla to the posterior compartment of the arm. Now, here is the here is axillary nerve, and this space we have here is a space that is called the quadrangular space. It will now exit through this space and then emerge at the posterior aspect of the arm. At that point of the arm, it will divide into two branches, the anterior and posterior branches. Let us go to the next slide so we can see this nerve at the posterior aspect. Now, this is the posterior aspect of the arm. So here is the axillary nerve emerging from the quadrangular fossa at the posterior aspect of the arm. At this point, it will divide into its two terminal branches, anterior division and posterior division. Now, the anterior branch will supply the deltoid muscle, while the posterior branch will supply the teres minor and also deltoid. Then it will become the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm. Here in this other diagram is the axillary nerve circling round the humerus, which we said is the reason it's called the circumflex nerve. We will look at the last terminal branch of the posterior cord, which is the radial nerve. Here is the radial nerve. The radial nerve is the distal continuation of the posterior cord. It's the largest branch of the brachial plexus. It also lies deepest in the axilla. Here in the axilla, it will give branches that will innervate some of the heads of the triceps brachii. And these are the long head and the medial heads of triceps brachii. It will also give off a cutaneous branch, which is called posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm. After it gives out these three branches, it will exit the anterior compartment through an intermuscular space here, which is called the triangular space. From here, it will exit to the posterior compartment of the arm. This is where we we'll end this part of the lecture. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop them in the comment section. The part three of this lecture is on brachial plexus injuries and their clinical presentations. Please make sure you don't miss it. If you consider this material helpful, we encourage you to please subscribe, like the video, and share it to your friends that you know it will also be helpful too. And together, we will build a unique anatomy family where we make anatomy simple. See you in my next video.